So let us solve these problems about tension members. The L254 by 254 by 31.8 tension member is made of A36 steel. The material strengths are Fy equals 248 megapascals and F sub U equals 400 megapascal. The bolts used are M16. So the given of S1 and the given values of S1, S2, and S3 are shown. Also, the properties of angle are shown. Which of the following most nearly gives the nominal strength of the tension member based on tensile yielding? So based on tensile yielding, so as you can see right here, so when we say tensile yielding, that is the So that is the failure of the member on the gross area, let's say on this one. So if we if we're going to pass a cutting plane right here, so what we will see is the is the gross section or the gross area of the tension members. So what we will see right there is the gross section. Okay, and then, so if we apply load on this direction, so if we apply load on this direction, tensile load particularly, so the failure of tensile yielding is that this gross section will yield. So our formula for the nominal strength is simply Pn equals Fy times Ag. So we substitute the value of Fy that is 248 megapascal and of course the value of Ag which is 15,100. So therefore that is Three seven four four eight hundred newton. So if we divide this by one thousand, so it will become kilonewton. The units will become kilonewton. Therefore, the nominal strength is three thousand seven hundred forty four point eight kilonewton. That's it. So letter. D. Okay, so the answer is letter D. T744 kilonewton. Next problem, which of the following most nearly gives the shear lag factor? Okay, so we use shear lag factor to account for the phenomenon wherein the stress being transferred to the member is not uniform because as you can see right here, the stress will not be uniform because not all of the elements of the cross-section are connected. So if you're going to look in this figure, only one leg is connected to the another member. So if that is the case, we have to apply shear lag factor. So Sherlock factor is used in determining the nominal strength for tensile rupture. For tensile rupture, the formula of norm of the nominal strength is Pn Pn equals Fu times Ae and then Ae that is the effective net area. It is determined by the product of the shear lag factor U and the net area P sub M. So for the shear lag factor, we can determine the value of the shear lag factor through the shear lag factor table. So as you can see right here, 
I have here the table D3.1, peer lag factors for connections to tension members. So, by the way, I am using the AISC code. So, we will find the case that is applicable to our problem. So, as you can see, we have a similar figure here for case 2. So, we can use case 2. But take note, as we read the description of this case 2, you will found at the last part of the paragraph, that for angles, case 8 is permitted to be used. So meaning for our problem, we can also use case 8 aside from case 2. So looking at case 8, we have two corresponding shear lag factors for case 8. So we're going to identify which among the two does the problem belong. So as you can see, if we will read this, with four or more fasteners per line in the direction of loading. So take note that all in all, we have one, two, three. We have three fasteners per line in the direction of loading. So if the load is directed along this direction, so we have three. We have three fasteners. So therefore, so the applicable shear lag factor using case eight is zero point. So going back, so using case 2, using case 2, the shear lag factor is determined by u equals 1 minus x bar over L. So by the way, x right here is the distance from the centroid of the member to the plane of connection. So how do we identify that? So, if we will draw the angle, and then here's the here's the plate wherein the angle is connected. So the distance x bar is the distance from the plane of connection. So when you say plane of connection, that is the inter interface. That is the interface wherein the wherein the two members are connected. And then, let's say this is the distance of, let's say, let's say this is the centroid of the angle. So as you can see, this is the X bar. So distance from the centroid of the member to the plane of connection. So for this particular problem, x bar is given, and its value is 74.9. How about L? How do we determine L? So in determining L, that is the length or that is the distance between the extreme bolt in the line. So meaning from one end of the bolt to the farthest end or to the bolt at the farthest end. So in this case, this is our L. So if we're going to compute our shear lag factor, we have u equals 1 minus 74.9 divided by L. So in the figure, L is equivalent to 2 times the spacing between the balls, which is S1, and it is given as 47.498 millimeters. So therefore, we can now solve for the shear lag factor, and that is 1 minus 74.9 over 2 times 47.498. So that is 0 0.211545749. Okay, and then from case 8. Our shear lag factor is u equals 0 0.6. So between these two, we will choose only one shear lag factor. So what is our clue in order to choose the shear lag factor to be used? So if we're going to read case 8, let us read the description of case 8. Single and double angles. If u is calculated per case 2, the larger value is permitted to be used. So meaning... We, in getting the shear lag factor, we can use case 2 and case 8, but 
in deciding what shear lag factor to be used. So, it is permitted by the code to use the larger value. So, in this case, we will use the larger value, which is 0 0.6. Okay, so therefore, the answer for this problem is letter A.